Um, so today, uh, my topic of the talk will be on uh, figuring out the Fitbit SDK. So, before I start my talk, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Brandon. Uh, you can find me on GitHub, Brandon Neo. I'm a Rubyist. Um, I know this talk JS, but then I'm a Rubyist, um, <laughs> mainly. Something is happening here today. <laughs> um, not, not to get fights started, I'm more of a Vim user than an Emacs user. Yeah. I, I hear somebody like, <gasps> Emacs, why not Emacs? Okay, I gym a lot, uh, although you can't tell, but, uh, and I love the PlayStation. I just got a PS4. I play X Machina, like, in between uh, times when I want to do my side project, but I, like, hey, I want to actually level up in X Machina, so, haven't gotten down to actually, like, um, complete a lot of my side projects because I've been doing a lot of PlayStation gaming. So, um, today I'll be talking about uh, what I've been doing with the Fitbit SDK. So the Fitbit SDK is actually the thing that powers the Fitbit OS. It's on the Ionic and the Versa. To actually use, to create an app using the Fitbit SDK, you just use um, JavaScript, SVG, and CSS. It supports ES6, which is fantastic because I can write my promises. Um, I want to actually uh, rewrite my app into TypeScript, to be honest, but um, that's, I'll, I'll tell you why I can't do that later. Um, it's actually powered by the JavaScript engine, so the JavaScript engine allows for JavaScript apps to be run on embedded devices, like very small microprocessors. And uh, the one rule of the Fitbit apps is, um, on the Fitbit OS is that apps has to be 10 megabytes in size. So if you want to throw like fancy image, actually you can't do fancy image because it's this small of a screen. So there's not much you can do with it. Um, yeah. So the app that I was actually trying to make using the Fitbit SDK is, um, I, I, I can't think of a very nice name. Parking.sg is being used already. So if I would use Parking.sg, it's like, oh, my app is Parking.sg. Oh, you mean the app that you used to pay your parking with? No. Um, Carp up SG. <laughs> I can't think of a better name than that. So if anybody has a better name, let me know. So it's based on the BART demo app from Fitbit. So the BART is the MRT for San Francisco, but um, with the BART app, you can tell when is the next train arrival time. So I adapted my app to tell where, uh, how many parking lots are there, you know, based on uh, the parking lots I selected. So the data is actually from data.gov.sg. And uh, currently, I've only designed my app to be working on the Fitbit Ionic because that's the only device I have. My girlfriend has the Versa, but um, I'll just concentrate on one de device at a time because it's quite a challenging platform. So the app structure for a um, Fitbit app, a typical Fitbit app is um, you, you have the app folder, um, which has the application and presentation logic. Um, then you have the companion folder where all the uh, downloading of data from the internet and stuff gets done. Um, I haven't used the common directory yet because I haven't abstracted um, much logic to create like ES6 modules yet. So I have left out the common module for my, the common directory for my app. Um, index GUI, widgets GUI are all SVG files which enables you to like, you know, design your app, the outlook and stuff. Um, settings is something which I've just added to my own app so that I can actually customize what parking, um, what car parks to have. And package.json is um, the project config, like should it be targeted to, um, to um, the Ionic or the Versa languages, you know, what other translations are there, it's all in the project config. So. Um, let me demo my app. So, one of the pains I have when I uh, work with the Fitbit Studio, so the only way I can actually like deliver my app is through the Fitbit Studio. Um, and herein, herein is the problem. It's like when the internet connection is off, right, I lose my, I, I can't even code. So, in the app directory, you can see I have the index.js, which loads the parking U, the car park UI. And the carpark UI is, um, it actually, it's, I, I think of it as like a view model because I use Knockout.js. So it 
it associates like the car park list, the car park tax to the um, to the UI itself. So so far, I've only loaded like three car parks because I realized that if I were to load more, I don't know how to scroll. So uh, for now, I'll just keep it at three. Um, yeah, and one of the main problems that I actually experienced when um, when developing with the Fitbit SDK is um, so there's this one interesting thing I did. So let me see if I can find the loop. The loop, yeah, the loop over here. So I. So usually if I put like, if there's a syntax error like this, um, there'll be a prompt in the, in, the, in the console that tells you like, oh, you know, this is not allowed. But, you know, I can still build this and I can still run it. I'm not going to build and run this now because if I build and run this now, I'm not sure if the internet connection goes off, you know, that's it. All my changes will be gone. So anyway, um, so what happens is, um, when I was actually programming the app, I realized that um, when I ran the app, it kept telling me, you know, call stack exceeded. I'm like, oh, where is the problem? You know, it's like, I, I'm, I'm also a CoffeeScript user, so I'm so spoiled by CoffeeScript. I don't bother, like, reading all the curly brackets and stuff. So I'm like, where's the problem? Like, um, where is it? It's like, I can't tell. It's like, right now, I know it's like I, but had to like look through all the files, including you know the companion UI and all that, um, and stuff like that to actually find the problem. So it's very limited in this way, the Fitbit SDK. So um, just to bring you through another the, the stuff that I've done so far. So I've hard coded the URL. I know I shouldn't do that, but uh, for now it works. So yeah, um, and. I would really want to do TypeScript with this because uh, currently the Lockstock app is using pure JavaScript. Um, if I use TypeScript, I could probably avoid some of the problems that I face while like the call stack error and all that. I don't know, but yeah. Um, so I run this. I know I can run it on my watch as well, but if I run it on my watch, nobody can see it. So, yeah, hopefully it runs and it's, it's still building, it's still, okay. Oh, I, I just built it, I just run it again. Yes. So the nice thing about the Fitbit SDK, I realized is that when it comes to settings, it's all using like index, it's using GSX. So, uh, coming from a Ruby knockout JS perspective, I find that this is something that is a start. Um, maybe it's a step towards like React, I think, and it's still loading. It doesn't run. Never mind. Maybe I can just prove on while this is still <laughs> continuing. To, it's, it's it's still building. All right. So death challenges, as I've emphasized earlier unintuitive IDE, um, there's no CLI. So whenever I build an app, I cannot go to the terminal and type, you know, uh, Fitbit SDK and then project name and then bam. Um, there's no version control. Um, but of course, I'm not, being a Git user, I'm not going to save like version 1, version 2, version 3, version 3.1, no. I, I still need my Git. So this is one of the problems I face while developing. Uh, no libraries. So have a tendency to, because I use Lodash a lot in my work, so I tend to have the tendency to like, oh, uh, I need to do a map, so I do underscore dot map. Um, and then I realize that, oh, I can't install a library, so I have to use, like, I have to go to MDN and then find like how to do maps and all that. Um, no test framework support, so that's, that's one of my biggest gripe when it comes to the Fitbit SDK as it is right now. Um, remember um, earlier on I mentioned that I want to um, run it on TypeScript, I want to refactor stuff. I don't dare to refactor anything because I'm too, there's no way for me to actually do any unit testing. Um, so yeah, but these are the solutions I've actually come up with. So uh, unintuitive IDE, the first three problems, no client, no CLI, no version control. 
what I do is that I export the whole project, which the uh, Fitbit Studio allows me to do. I can export the whole project. I export the whole project. I edit and lint it in Vim, and then I do a git commit, and then I commit it to GitHub. Yeah, to make sure that you know I have a version control. Um, no libraries, um, so that means I can't do is odd, is even, is number. Yeah, I uh, have to do it the plain old JavaScript way. So MDN is love for um, fit, for the Fitbit SDK. Uh, no test framework support. Yeah, so what to, to solve that? I have to do like manual testing. So this means building the app, running it on my Fitbit. Um, if it doesn't work, then try again and again and again. So it's kind of painful. On the Fitbit uh, front and uh, on the app front, I've also faced a few challenges as well. So the first of which is small screen. Um, and on the data side, right, um, data.gov.sg, they use the SVG21 format for all their car parks. And and Fitbit uses a lat and long format. So take, for example, the York Hill car park in somewhere in Ultram Park. This is the coordinate that I need to match on the Fitbit, on the Fitbit site. But um, this, is the, this is the data I get from um, data.gov.sg. So yeah, it's, it's pretty iffy over there. So what I need to do is, um, for the small screen, the solution I can think of is you know, just adhere to the user interface guide. So stick to the pra best practices, look at the sample apps, uh, try not to squeeze everything into one small screen, and try to optimize the use of that small screen by following the guide. So that's something I learned while developing the app. Um, for, for the let long and XY conversion, what I plan to do for my app is to actually pre-convert all the coordinates of 1,861 car parks, and then pre-store it into um, the app itself. I mean, I don't think 1,861 car parks would take up whole, all 10 megabytes, but uh, I'll just keep my fingers crossed and hope all will work well. So, as I mentioned, so there's some things I've yet to do for my app, like you know, loading all the 1,861 car parks using the location API. So I've only managed to use the companion API to retrieve data for the Fitbit because how the Fitbit works is that it doesn't actually have a direct internet connection to your Wi-Fi. Um, it has to go through your phone to retrieve the data to actually load the data. So um, the next step will be to also use the location API to actually find the three nearest car park. That's the next step for my app. Um, and in addition to that, as if you saw the uh, screenshot of the app earlier, you see like I only have the code of the car park, like HLM. What does that mean? Um, that's actually Honlin Park, but you won't know. So I, I think the next thing I should do for my app is to select the app, select the car park and see like, okay, this is Hong Lim Park. Um, what's the rate, so on and so forth in the screen. Um, also publish my app to the Fitbit app gallery. I tried it once, but I don't have an icon, so if somebody can design an icon for me, that would be fantastic. Yeah, because if not, I'm just gonna use the default icon that you see on the parking signs. Um, and being a test-driven developer, um, I really want right tests, so I've got to find a way to actually like mock maybe all the Fitbit modules so that I can actually at least get some tests up and refactor my code so that you know it looks readable and something I can maintain you know so yeah that's it from me thank you any questions huh oh the build <laughs> I don't think it's happening so yeah it's <laughs> what Oh yeah, I had the plus plus, but it's not working. I don't know why it was working just now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, we have time for a couple of questions in your life. Yeah, you can ask me anything about the Fitbit SDK. And yes. Not, not throwing, but this sounds 
this sounds quite painful. I mean, wasn't, wasn't writing just a mobile website be easier? I mean, yeah, it's, writing a mobile website would be easier, but um, I'm driving, I can't like use my phone while I drive. So, the traffic police isn't here, but then a way to get around, you know, the, tra the, the mobile phone regulations is to actually check the, to check the parking lots on my, on my, um, on my watch. So, that yeah. That's what I was thinking, but then it makes it more dangerous because the screen becomes smaller. Then you need to do this. <laughs> if I reduce it to two car parks, oh, but anyway. That's, a, that's another UI problem altogether. Yeah. We're getting the we're getting the little stand that all the Grab drivers use. Hmm? Easier then. Just getting the little stand to put your dashboard. I only have one. I only have one stand for my um, for my um, for my phone at the moment. And it's mostly on Google Maps. So yeah. But maybe if Google Maps introduce the pro the feature, then it won't have to be on my watch. But I did this project mainly to challenge myself to find out how I can actually build uh, JavaScript embedded stuff on a watch with, so, with such limitations. Yeah. Any other questions? Are there location setting toggles for a Fitbit as a Fitbit user? Uh, when you install an app, you can actually select... Uh, there are some apps that will, uh, that will usually ask you like for... Um, location permissions and all that. So yeah, there's a location toggle setting. So yeah. Any other questions? Any Fitbit users here? Am I the only one? <laughs> 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 we have two. We have two, yes. So if you don't have any questions for him after you can approach him like, privately. Like, thank okay, you thank much. you.